Okay, so another day, more tech here on Tech and Tomorrow. For you folks who follow the channel, you guys will remember that a few years ago, I got my hands on a brand new LG OLED TV, and this thing looked amazing. Curved screen, 65 inches. I mean, it was a badass TV at its time. And I really thought that, you know, it's gonna be a long time before I'll see a TV that can compete with this, especially at a lower price. And one thing I never really liked about it is that it only had an HDMI 1.0 port, which means the games were locked at 30 frames per second. I wasn't able to get the 60 frames per second at 60 hertz whatsoever. And for gaming and surfing on the internet, that TV was just kind of okay. But now, LG has given me another TV. Now, this is a nano cell TV. It's the latest technology from these guys. And basically, nano cell technology takes all of your pixels and just has them so compressed that the image that you see on the screen is just completely solid. And this thing has some killer features like Dolby HDR. And Dolby HDR gives you like 30 million colors and the most vibrant screen you can get along with that technology. Now, a lot of people out there have been talking about some stuff about these TVs about banding. It's been kind of a big issue. So I'm not sure if I'm exactly seeing banding because I'll admit straight off I'm not a TV expert. But once in a while when I'm looking at the TV, I do see lines scrolling down. So it's either from the refresh or it's doing some of that banding stuff. But I have to say though that the features on this TV, however, are very nice, especially for a TV that's only $1,400. This particular TV does not have a curved screen, but however, it is a 65 inch class TV. 64.5 diagonal screen, very, very nice picture, very small bezel around the edge so that you're getting a full screen. All in all, the visuals on this TV are really nice. Now, as far as the resolution goes, this TV is fully 4K, 3840 by 2160. This TV also features True Motion 240, which is 120 hertz of refresh rate. What this means is that when you're watching movies and there's all kinds of action and people are fighting and going all over the place, it keeps those images from being blurry so you get a solid image throughout. You guys can also see that just from a visual aspect, I'm talking about the way the TV looks, it is a very nice TV. It has a very, very nice base. You can honestly fit a nice little soundbar underneath it, so if you're looking to do that, you've got plenty of room to do that as well. And if for some reason you do not want to set the TV on a stand, you want to set it on the wall, this TV does have a vase amount option. So you can stick it right on your wall and play all your games. Now, as far as gaming goes, if you guys have read the reviews around the net, everybody's pretty much telling that this is like the TV for gaming. Now, I will say it is good for gaming, but there are some things about it that could absolutely be better. Now, true, you do get an HDMI 2.0 port, so you get 60 frames per second at 60 hertz in your gaming, but the response time is only 15 milliseconds, which is kind of slow for gaming, and it's also an IPS-based panel. IPS panels are actually kind of the slowest. If you had either an OLED or a TN, it'd be better. And honestly, if you could get a TV that had FreeSync or G-Sync in it, that would make it the Uber gaming TV. But as it is, this TV still does pretty well for gaming, although it does have a few caveats. Love it or hate it, this TV does feature WebOS 3.5. Now, even though this WebOS is kind of convenient built into the TV, I found that when watching stuff through it didn't compare to my Shield or to my Fire at all. The picture just had lacking. That's the only thing I can say it lacked. Like when I went over and I went on my Fire TV and I was watching the show called Andromeda, it looked perfectly crisp, really nice, true 1080. But when I went and watched it through the app to the WebOS, it did not look that well at all. So the WebOS is kind of a two-way you know, two -way street. Yes, it makes it easy because you don't have to have a bunch of remotes. You can do everything through one remote. But as far as the streaming goes, it seems like it's really not as powerful as those individual boxes that people have. Like I said, both my Fire and, excuse me, and my Shield look way, way better than watching stuff through WebOS. And a lot of people out there I know don't like WebOS, but honestly, you don't have to use it whatsoever. You can turn those features off and completely ignore them. And that's what I did after I tried using WebOS. It's a cool idea, but I'm not really all that fond of it myself. But if you do happen to love the WebOS, check it out. The remote control itself has buttons so you can jump right to Netflix or right to Amazon by a click of a button. And the rest of the layout of the remote control is very simple to use. There's nothing confusing whatsoever. And looking at the remote control, you guys can figure it out easily. Take a look at the back of the TV. You guys can see here are where all the inputs and outputs are located. So first up, we have four HDMI 2.0 ports. These play your games at 60 frames per second at 60 hertz. And it also has support for HDCP 2.2, which means that all the latest 4K Blu-ray movies will play on this TV without problem. You get three USB ports, a single connection for your antenna, your cable, a composite in, an ethernet cable, and if you don't have a plug-in, this TV also has Wi-Fi built in. You get a single optical cable, and then finally a mini jack. And what the mini jack is, is to plug in your speakers or a sound bar. 
One thing I want to point out to you guys is that when we're filming these videos, we're filming at 4K at 30 frames per second. And some of the lines that you see on the screen while we're filming are due to that. It's not actually a TV doing that. When you're sitting in front of the TV, you don't notice that at all. The only thing I will have to say is that sometimes when they're scrolling through the pictures, I do see a couple of lines going down. Now, I've seen some people saying things about post-processing problems and all this stuff, and I looked online and I wasn't really able to find any solid information to support this. So it looks like some TV do have problems with banding and some problems with post-processing, but I'm not actually seeing that in this TV. One thing that I really do like about this TV is the colors are amazingly bright. I mean, so bright that people are older probably have to turn the brightness and contrast down because let me tell you, man, it just freaking pops. I mean, big time pops. And that's really nice. And plus text when you're surfing online or seeing text on screen is so dense that it looks really nice. It honestly looks like it's being anti-aliased. I don't think it is, but it looks that nice. So if you're into doing tech stuff, surfing the internet and all that, this TV is really good for that. And like I said, even though it's not the absolute, you know, best solution for gaming, obviously you can get killer monitors out there that have the best features, G-Sync, 144 hertz, all that stuff. But think about it. This is pretty much a TV that sits in your living room and it does have the ability to game that's pretty good is it the best no it has a few caveats but it'll still do it this tv comes in market like i said at about fourteen hundred dollars right now and it really does look really close to my old oled tv that i had now take in mind there's new oled tvs now there's going to be some coming out next year technology on tvs if you guys know is jumping so freaking fast it's like bunny after bunny after bunny so that, you know even by a few months from now this tv is probably going to be outdated but honestly the screen and everything the way it looks it looks to me almost as good as that OLED picture. In some ways, it's nicer. The sound, let me talk about that right now. Inside of this, it has Harman Kardon sound. That's right. Two speakers, 20 watts each, and it actually has virtual surround. That's right. And, and uh, so if you like surround sound, you don't have to actually put different speakers in there because it'll simulate it. And when you turn the volume at full blast on this TV, it still sounds really good. There's no distortion. There's no weirdness. It's really nice. So if you don't want to use a 5.1 system or a sound bar, I really do think this, that the sound in the TV is pretty decent. Is it the best in the world? No, but usually, come on, let's just face it, speakers inside of a TV usually suck. These definitely don't suck. Evacuate the city. Engage all defenses. And you get this man a shield. I admit that I am no TV expert. I haven't gone out there and done a bunch of research on TVs, but I know that I watch a lot of TV and play a lot of games. And from just a user's aspect, which is my opinion, you know, like my honest opinion, this particular display is very, very nice. You get a 65 inch TV, lots of features, decent speakers, a price that's you know, under $2,000 for a TV that has a lot of stuff out there. It does seem like some people out there just don't like LG TVs, period. And I mean, that's just the way it is. I've heard a lot, you know, Samsung's better but honestly, I think those two companies are like pretty much head in head. They're both kind of the same thing. Every company has its caveats. This you know, particular display has its caveats as well, because like I said before, it's not the absolute best thing for gaming because there could be a lot better features, but it does do gaming at 60 hertz, 60 frames per second, which is what a lot of people want. So at the end of the day, if you're looking for a TV that won't break the bank, that has lots of features that'll let you game, sounds good and all that stuff, this TV is something you should definitely check out. If you get a chance and you can go down to like best buy or somewhere like that you should definitely go and see it in person and see what you think me personally overall i think it's a very very nice tv with just a few caveats that make it not the best for gaming so i'm eric you guys have been watching tech of tomorrow like usual we'll have links down below so if you want to find out more information about it do so the average rating of the tv however are 5.0 out of 5.0 what does that say